That looks crazy. The existence of the mysterious SR-72 has finally been confirmed. This hypersonic spy aircraft, with capabilities that sounds like it stepped out of a science fiction movie scene, has created a lot of waves in the aviation world, and even more in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts. There are several questions concerning this aircraft that have been shrouded in secrecy for too long. What are the capabilities of this extremely advanced aircraft? Can it in any way be compared to its predecessor? Join us as we delve into the mystery surrounding the SR-72 that the United States Air Force just declared real. The first unconfirmed news about the SR-72 came out in early 2007, when several sources revealed since 20, 2007, there's been rumors about this thing. That's insane. Well, so it's massive to they get can't it confirmed. Hide things, can they can't hide because the public will find out. <laughs> there must be leaks somehow. Someone's yeah, leaking 100%. the info. Yeah. It's mad. Well, that a popular defense company, Lockheed Martin, was working on an aircraft that could fly at an incredible speed of Mach 6, making it wow. faster than any aircraft in history. But that was not the only news concerning this mysterious aircraft, because conspiracy theorist Tyler Glockner also claimed that he found a secretive aircraft the hell? searching Florida swamplands on Google Earth. Wow. He mentioned that the runway where the mysterious object is located belongs to Pratt & Whitney, a company known for designing aircraft engines. This aircraft that was shrouded in secrecy is a direct successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, mm. and it is designed to fly faster and higher than any missile or cannon shot at it. It is safe to say that this aircraft would be unbeatable. Just before we get into the breathtaking details of the Dark Star, let's take a peek into the capabilities of the predecessor. So apparently with this Dark Star, if a missile is shot at it, the missile can't catch it. So if it, is it because the missile is too slow? Yeah, it's or? too slow. Oh. It's just, it can't keep up with its speed. Wow, that's, that's how that quick it is. That's mad. The SR-71 is a technological marvel that was designed by the American aerospace engineer, Clarence Kelly Johnson. Similar to the SR-72, the SR-71 was the result of a black project, but that's not all. This aircraft made the U.S. feared by other nations, mm -hmm. including China, because it exuded unmatched power that combined a speed that was more than two times that of sound and strength that other aircraft could not even boast of. Ah. Aside from its unrivaled capabilities, the $292 million jet was built with one of the most strongest metals on Earth, titanium. <laughs> However, it's not just about using the strongest metal available. It's light as well. This choice of material served a greater purpose which is to maintain the aircraft's stealthy feature. And since it was designed to be a spy plane, this is considered very important. It was also equipped with advanced sensors, a powerful radar, and a high-definition camera. It could gather intelligence through images, signals, measurements, and signatures. The Blackbird was powered by two powerful Pratt and Whitney J-58 engines with each of them providing a thrust of 32,000 pounds. That's a lot. It could reach speeds up to Mach 3.2 and fly at altitudes of 85,000 feet, which required wow. pilots to wear pressurized suits like astronauts because they were almost in space. Oh my Yo, gosh. so they got their own special suits for it. That is, that must go so high. And like, it's such a big threat for other countries. Like, how do you stop a thing like that? That's going double, more than double the speed your maximum can go. That's why they kept this hidden. <laughs> Watch the new one. Yeah, the max. they did not want other countries to know what was coming. That was Mach 3.2 speed. So Mach 6, that's practically double of what this one does. And this one's already the one they're scared of. So the new one, that's why, like you said, they waited for the mm. perfect time to drop it. They waited for Russia and China to reveal their dragon. What's that? Dragon fighter jet and all those ones. And then they're like, all right. Is that all they got? This is what we've had, yeah, <laughs> all this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's no surprise that NASA, with its focus on Mad. space, operated the SR-71 alongside the US Air Force. In terms of weapons, the SR-71 had none, and this is because it didn't need them. Hmm. When shot at, the Blackbird would simply accelerate to outfly the missile or nah. round that was shot at it. This Too explains quick. why no SR-71 Blackbird was ever shot down. Hmm. 
To this day, it holds the record for both the fastest and highest flying operational aircraft in history, which is quite a significant feat for an aircraft that retired over two decades ago. Wow. But now American engineers have built an aircraft that is better than the SR-71, even better than the sixth generation fighters. The Dark Star makes use of the latest technology to dominate the skies completely. And there are also rumors that reveal that it flies so fast that its shockwave can blow roofs off houses below. Oh, They're trying to be the next so UFO. According to some yeah. secret information, it has the most powerful laser ever made. The hell? Despite the rumors, the USAF initially did not officially confirm the existence of such aircraft. They did not make any announcement at all. However, Lockheed Martin has finally announced that they are working on the SR-72 project, with a prototype expected to fly soon. And in the spirit of confirmation, the United States Air Force has also declared that the Dark Star is real. Many sources call- That is nuts. Imagine being the pilot that gets to- uh... Fly this. Pilot that for the first time. That's yeah. so much like pressure and responsibility, but an experience as well. It must be exciting for them as well. For them, it's like you know a car head driving their dream a performance car. car. Yeah. So That's this smart. is every fighter jet's next, dream. I'm next assuming level, next level speeds. Called the secretive SR-72 project, Dark Star. But this is far from correct because the aircraft doesn't have an official nickname, at least not yet but people also refer to it as Son of Blackbird. <laughs> Nicknaming military aircraft like the F-15 Eagle usually involves historical tradition, practical reasons, and protocols from the military or the manufacturer. However, this usually happens after the Air Force officially accepts the aircraft. The story of Dark Star's development can be connected to two industries, the entertainment industry and military. During the production of a very popular movie, yeah. Top Gun, Paramount Pictures asked Lock Comment below if you guys want us to react to Top Gun. I've not seen the new one. I've seen the old one, old school. I haven't watched it. You've the not old watched one. it. I know how good it's meant to be. And I know the uh they apparently it's like they're showing clips of this new plane or something in there. Something along the lines of that. Uh -huh. So um comment below if you think it'll be a good reaction and you guys want to see it. Get the popcorn ready. To yep. Design an aircraft that would make the main character, Mitchell, the fastest person ever. <laughs> Surprisingly, Lockheed Martin was already working on this idea, so it was not a hard assignment because the aircraft was already under development by Skunk Works, which is a division of Lockheed. Why is this division named Skunk Works? The name originated during World War II when engineer Kelly Johnson's secret aircraft development team at Lockheed was housed in a tent near a smelly plastic factory. Inspired by Al Cap's comic strip, Lil Abner, where a place called the Skunk Works emitted a terrible odor, Team engineer Irv Culver jokingly answered the phone with Skunk Works. The name caught on with the team and eventually <laughs> evolved into Skunk Works, which is now a registered trademark of Lockheed Martin. Just like that. Unlike how the name sounds, this division is pretty incredible at what it does. To give you an idea of Skunk Works' capabilities, they are the brains behind the creation of some powerful aircraft like the F-22 and F-35. Oh, we know about those bad boys. Why was Lockheed Martin working on this project in the very first place? Since 1998, the company has been trying to create a fighter jet with extreme speed that would replace the SR-71, but they had an extremely hard time achieving this. Hmm. Lockheed Martin's advanced development programs, known as Skunk Works, developed the Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, also known as the HTV-2, which is a rocket-launched aircraft, as part of DARPA's Falcon project. The HTV-2 project was used to collect data on aerodynamics, guidance, navigation, control, and aerothermal effects. It was an uncrewed aircraft designed to fly through Earth's atmosphere at very high speeds. The vehicle first flew in April 2010 and again in August 2011, reaching a top speed of Mach 20. Ah. The information that was gained from working on this project is now helping to create better designs for the SR-72. Quick one, guys. In the comment section below, how much miles per hour is one muck? Equivalent to. Yeah, because I don't know. I just know it's like But I think in speeds. the States, it's kilometers per hour. No, so... I think they use miles per hour, apparently. Is it? Comment below. Whether it's kilometers or whether it's miles per hour, whichever one, because I can do the conversion there. But how much is one muck? Because they must be mad. More than that, way more. Okay, 200. Way more. 
You're talking about the fastest fighter jet. Okay, 500. In, probably like a thousand or something. Oh. I think maybe a thousand miles per hour is a muck, you know. Comment below. It's you definitely know, not I 100. Just... Let's slaughter the facts for that comment. Comment below. Ooh. Earlier this year, Brad Leland from Lockheed Martin <laughs> stated on the company's website that hypersonic aircraft and missiles hypersonic. could enter restricted airspace and hit almost any target on a continent in less than an hour. He said speed is the next major advancement in aviation to handle future threats. This technology could revolutionize warfare, mm. similar to how stealth technology is changing combat today. The son of the Blackbird is being designed with more capabilities and will use advanced materials like carbon-carbon composites. It gets even better. These materials can handle more extreme heat than the titanium skin used on the SR-71. Also, as states earlier, the Dark Star is expected to have great speed stealth and versatility the prototype if not already in operation Punisher. will include advanced avionics and possibly ai assisted systems for autonomous operations which earlier hypersonic aircraft did not have a key feature of the sor 72 is its ability to reach hypersonic speeds up to mach 6 which is considered to be much faster than the blackbird's top speed this speed allows it to outrun missiles and avoid current air defense systems which has given the United States an advantage in reconnaissance and possible strike missions in heavily defended areas. Lockheed Martin is working with Aerojet Rocketdyne on a special turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system to help the aircraft achieve a cruise speed of over Mach 6. While cruise there are speed. engines that wow. can power an aircraft at hypersonic speeds, they can't be used during takeoff and landing. So the Dark Star needs an engine that can handle both. The turbine engine will provide thrust until the aircraft reaches Mach 3. Then you can see why so much money gets pumped into the military because these are the kind of projects the US military are doing. These projects will take like 20, 30 years to come out successful. So imagine the money They're pumped They're very for. advanced yeah. for military technology. So advanced. They're taking the military to a different level. Yeah. Like way beyond your normal expectation of what a military is. Maybe Crazy. they're working with aliens. Alien Tech Area 51. Maybe. We're going to react to that as well. And the dual mode ramjet will take over to power the flight at hypersonic speeds. To reduce drag, the aircraft will use a single inlet nozzle for both the turbine engine and the ramjet. This new mysterious aircraft's abilities are important for major power conflicts. Its fast intelligence gathering and strike capabilities support the U.S. national defense strategy which focuses on being ready for intense conflicts with countries like Russia and China. Its speed and stealth make it a crucial tool for strengthening air defenses. Its development shows a strategic change in U.S. military planning, moving towards more adaptable and dynamic platforms that can operate in complex future battlefields. This change aligns with the Pentagon's priorities for modernizing space, cyber, and autonomous technologies. Mm. However, stealth technology might not work well for an aircraft like this because radar absorbing materials may not handle high temperatures. The jet's large infrared signature would also make it hard to hide. The aircraft might leave a trail detectable by radar like the SR-71. But with its amazing speed and ability to quickly leave an area and outrun most non-hypersonic missiles, these issues are mainly theoretical. As for weaponry, bombs and conventional missiles aren't suitable for an aircraft like this. Since it could collide with them after launching and to avoid such deadly occurrences, the Dark Star will be equipped with laser systems instead of other weapons. I think that's smart laser technology instead of bomb technology. And one, I think laser technology will be so much lighter as well than holding missiles, do you know what I mean? I was just about to comment on because look how fast this travels. Mm. If it had bombs in it, I can't imagine how heavy that must they be. They even said their worry is if they let go of the bomb and they could collide with it because it's moving so quick so mm. the bomb drop in is too slow to move away from the plane itself that it might even collide with its own detonation yeah how mad is that so lasers make sense it's it's a bit of a you can't little dangerous little laser. piece of tech up there isn't yeah, it? yeah it's all mad you have to consider everything they, yeah they're considering next level stuff yeah. like things we would never even fathom they're considering mm. the aircraft is currently equipped with an enhanced version of the laws which has a power output of 350 kilowatts and is capable of cutting through five inches of metal with its beam. Oh my God. However, the main advantage of using laser weapons is its ability to be integrated within the aircraft structure 
and deployed when necessary, ensuring aerodynamic performance of the aircraft to achieve hypersonic speeds. Another intriguing feature of the SR-72 is its cockpit design that is invisible when viewed head-on, similar invisible. to the X-59 that is being developed by the Skunk Works division. In the movie Top Gun Maverick, the aircraft uses synthetic vision systems to see what lies directly ahead. Additionally, the illustration of the Dark Star on Lockheed Martin's website revealed a port on the upper part of the fuselage which is typically used for astronomical navigation systems. This design element is affectionately referred to as R2-D2, in wearing reference Star Wars. to the renowned droid from the Star Wars universe. Like its predecessor, the SR-72 would also feature the most intelligent sensors and the highest quality cameras to take photos that cover a hundred miles in each shot. Yeah, with today's tech on cameras, it's gonna have the most ultimate camera where no matter where it is, it'll probably be like fucking 4K level, like no matter how fast it's going, mm -hmm. no blur, nothing. Mm -hmm. Hence why it's a spy, spy plane. Yeah. It's clever. However, there's more to the SR-72 than just its capabilities. Intriguing? Yeah, let's get into it. The SR-72, as a potential candidate for the future generation NGAD fighter of the U.S. Air Force, is slated to be fitted with some of the most advanced technologies the world has seen. That is insane. According to the Air Force's biennial acquisition report, covering the fiscal years 2019 and 2020, the NGAD fighter would maximize its stealth features by taking an overall triangular shape, internally holding its payload, and having no distinct tail section also known as vertical stabilizers. It is the first fighter in history to be unveiled with such a revolutionary design. On a serious level, if America had a fleet of these new planes with these new technologies, who's stopping them? They could probably take out the whole world on their own with this kind of level uh, planes. I honestly think they could take out the entire world with military at the same time if they have like their setup proper. Mm. But then, that being said, why don't they have more of these? Is it because they, it costs too much money? No, the technology is just coming now. They just they've been developing it for the last thirty, four years. It's like they're literally just announcing it that it's coming now. Oh, like that's the reason they would have had this years ago if they had the tech for it, but they didn't. But it was under development. It was under development for year many, 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 many years since two thousand seven. It's been development, and that's when it got rumored. Let alone, it's probably been before that. Probably like from two like. 2000 or something like that so they're gonna have plenty of these but like you said cost it will cost a fortune for sure so will they that one trillion a year they pump in is probably going to become three trillion or some shit yeah and is it a disadvantage to only use a laser as well i don't know good question they'll still have their bombs but it's a good question it's a good point what if they go carry bombs, what if it? they go more towards the laser tech yeah. over bombs and they lower their bomb uh development Will that work a different way? It's a good question, valid point. We, anything can happen. Mm. Vertical stabilizers had always been required to keep an aircraft airborne until the concept of active flow control came into life in the B-2 Spirit. Active oh, B2 flow Spirit control uses that. computer brains on board to constantly adjust the flow around the aircraft like to UFO. keep it airborne, similarly to how birds <laughs> fly. The result of this on an aircraft is top level stealth and well, and not so wallet friendly cost, but it yeah, justifies cost. why the B-2 cost $2 billion. $2 billion why for NASA that. NASA decided wow. to invest a mind-blowing <laughs> amount of $1 billion in the SR-72 development. Why Congress has budgeted over $10 billion for the Air Force's NGAD. Program. I'm telling you that one trillion a year that they're doing now is gonna once this tech is fully ready and they start developing them and they're gonna want they're gonna get power hungry and make a fleet of it. It's gonna be like five, six. I trillion. don't think they're gonna make a lot of it. I think they'll make a decent. I'm not saying they're gonna have like thousands, but I'm gonna. I think they'll have a decent amount to yeah. like be ready. Mad, that's mad. Program in less than a decade, and why the Navy recently detailed a budget request of over nine billion dollars for the next. Just five billions years. for jokes, like advanced sensors and weapons. The immediate surroundings of the SR-72 as the NGAD fighter will be miles wide as it would be capable of spotting targets, friendlies, and points of interest from tens of miles away, and also attack them with precision. Mm. The sensors that make this possible come with maximum connectivity, and thus the ability to share its data with every other member of the fleet, whether it is a sixth generation aircraft or not. In order to keep every member of the United States fleet connected to relevant information in real time, 
the U.S. would do away with radars mounted on aircraft and instead make use of electronically configured smart skins integrated into the aircraft's fuselage. Very clever. This technique would result in increased sensor sensitivity as well as network adaptability. It would also aid with making communication easier across the fleet and ultimately improves remote control. Open architecture, laser weapons that can take out targets with unrivaled precision, a mix of high-performance guns, missiles, AETP engines capable of subsonic, transonic, and supersonic flight that cost over $6 billion to develop. Oh my God. Loyal wingman, top of the line. So just that piece on its own costs $6 billion. I'm telling you, they're not going to make a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll have a... Their aim one day will to have their whole military running of these. One day, I'm not saying in the first year, but within like 10, 15 years, with the money gone in, they were going to want their whole fleet. Telling you, they'll take out. They could literally take out the planet if they wanted to. I think the cost to make one of these. So, how much was the B two? Did they say it was something dumb? It was like I think they said nine billion. Nine billion. It was a I long. Think, it was something yeah. billion. It was in the billions. Um, one of these will probably be like. I think thirty billion. I was thinking around twenty five to thirty. Yeah, I think thirty billion. Thirty billion for just one. that piece was six billion. Comment below what your estimated estimating one of these uh dark sr72s are going to cost i think about 25 to 30 billion wow line electronic warfare countermeasures avionics and communications are only some of what to expect on the fighter but despite the already advanced features that this aircraft boasts of decades of history have taught not only the united states but other nations that an aircraft will always have room to be better, no matter how advanced it already is, especially with near-peer adversaries getting more and more near-peer. Take the EF-22 Raptor, for example. Oh, we reacted to that Aside recently. From being Check the it very out. first stealthy aircraft, the Raptor was unbeatable, but this fighter jet eventually needed some upgrades to keep it formidable against mm. advanced threats. As a result, the Dark Star will come with an open architecture that enables it to take on new upgrades easily and quickly. See, that's clever because you know the F-22, they were saying they have to retire them. And once they're in the process of making a new one and they're going to retire the old ones. And I found out from you guys in the comment section because I asked what happens to the F-22. They destroy it. They do not sell it to allies. They don't donate it to allies because it can be used against them one yeah. day. They just, they take it to a scrapyard basically. Mm. Which, no, is which is fair clever. Enough. But this is the smarter way to do it where this is a platform that can always be upgraded moving forward. So they never have to redevelop the platform. This might last a thousand years and they just have it in a way that's always been able to upgrade without getting rid. Mm. The F-22, as good as it was, now it's a bit of a waste now because once they get rid of them, the amount of money they lost on building the F-22s and the time and effort. All of these would combine to create an aircraft with an estimated unit cost of $1 billion and a top speed of Mach 6, the closest thing today to a truly hypersonic aircraft. Is that $1 billion for that? Because we were saying about 30, Bill. I think he said the production of that is $1 billion, but I swear the B2 bomber, they said like $9 billion or something crazy, unless we misread it, I don't know, along the lines of that. $1 billion, still crazy. speculations and reports about the SR-72's development timeline. In 2017, Lockheed Martin claimed the combined cycle hypersonic engine was ready for real-world application. The company suggested that a single-engine demonstrator could begin flying by the early 2020s, with a target of 2030 for a twin-engine platform to enter operational service. That must be so quick. The Dark Star is unarguably a very unique aircraft that would have a great impact on warfare strategy, but there is another aircraft just as mind-blowing. A few miles away in the workshop of Atlanta Commercial Star flight. Hermes, there's another aircraft known as the Quarter Horse. Why does it look like it? The Quarter Horse, which is the first aircraft to come out of Hermes, is fitting to be a remotely piloted hypersonic aircraft Ooh, wow. with a top speed of Mach 5.5. Remote as well. Almost matching the speed of SR-72. But unlike the Dark Star, the Quarter Horse gets credited as the only hypersonic jet that could serve commercial purposes in the future. I just said that, commercial. Do you know why I said that? Because this bloody logo makes it look like British Airways or something. <laughs> so I thought, I don't know, the size of it just looked a bit more commercial. So if they ever want it to go commercial purposes, they can. I mean, I feel really cool flying that, but there's yeah. no windows. It's, it's a prototype. Oh. They'll add all that stuff. Obviously, you get a window. You're, they'll add 
right now, obviously, they're building it, so it's just early days. They do it with cars as Recognizing well. Recognizing the potential, both NASA and the Air Force are heavily invested in Hermes, with over $60 million from the Air Force alone. Wow. Worth it. The Quarter Horse also remains the first hypersonic jet with the highest payload capacity. And this is why it is referred to as the aircraft for the future, mm. because it is the one that civilians would most likely see frequently yeah. and actually sit in. To achieve its almost impossible Hypersonic speeds, speeds, despite its huge size, the aircraft is fitted with a TBCC engine based on the General Electric J85 engine. That is powerful. This engine, which was used in the Northrop F-5 fighter jet, a aircraft that proved to be successful in combat operations, has already shown that it works well at supersonic speeds. To make it even perfect, the Hermes will modify it with their own technology to use it for hypersonic speeds. Also, Hermes has about seven of these engines, each weighing about a quarter of a ton. Wow. It is one of General Electric's most successful engines, producing about 3,000 pounds of thrust without afterburner and 5,000 pounds with afterburner. This means a New Yorker could reach London in one and a half hours instead Whoa. of the usual seven, which is at least a Get us on that. We need that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> New York's looking like a possibility soon, guys. That yeah. could be one of the places we're going. Mm -hmm. Could be. Increase in speed. In terms of costs, the development of Hermes seems to be quite impressive too. The quarter horse is centered around hardware-rich, autonomous, and reusable systems that focus squarely on requirements. This way, there are virtually no unnecessary components to drive up costs in the program. Thus, Hermes is quite confident that they could execute the quarter horse test flight for less than $100 million, well, that's which is good. relatively low for a hypersonic project yeah, at this stage. Very. However, with the Hermes quarter or horse, the NGAD and SR-72 son of Blackbird, the United States remained assured and would maintain its stance in dominating the skies with hypersonic aircrafts. The United States is devoted to dominating the skies and would invest anything possible towards its cause. We can see. However, yeah, we can nations, see that. Including China and Russia are equally committed to building next generation fighters with advanced capabilities. That is crazy. What was your thoughts on it? It's good to see that America don't just think of the current, they think of the future and how can we, they've already got the best equipment that they can have mm. but they think how can we make this even better mm. which i think is good their innovation is next level the companies they're working with to develop these jets and these hypersonic machines is like amazing like how do you even go about building that where do you know what i mean like i mean it took them 30 years to build yeah. this one things once they got the technology on point that lifespan will be a lot quicker the production uh, cycle will be a lot faster and then they can produce them left, right, and center. Scary. Mm -hmm. Scary to think that power even exists out in the world. But yeah, thanks guys for recommending the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For now, peace out. Bye.